Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games, I'm Lee, and in this video I'll show you how I made this base for my Bulgors that will feature in my Warcry Warband. Here's the base we're going to be making in this video, and I'll go step by step through the process, showing you how I make it, and how I paint it, and this is the Bulgor taken from the set of three for the Beasts of Chaos, and I'll be using these in my Warcry Warband, and they'll be taking part in a campaign. But we'll be focusing on just this one for the video, so you can see how I made this base, and I'm making it on this elevated base, as I want to use him as a proxy model for not just the Bulgor, but also for a Doom Bull. I'll put a list of all the paints and ingredients we'll be using in this video in the description below so you can find out exactly what's used. And then here you can see I've got some budgie sand, some different grades of like um, sawdust flocking, some small gravel stones and some bark. And we'll also use a little bit of cork that you can see here, just broken up from a placemat. And here's that bark. And I've just dried this in the oven a little bit. This was taken from a fallen tree in the local woods. And then I just um, put that in the oven, dried it out, and then you can cut it break it off and then just arrange it to get the bulgur standing nice and flat. So here he is, all stood on it, and so I went through a dry run first before I started to glue it together, and with that I took my Gorilla Super Glue and then I just moved the parts away so I knew where they would go when I put them back, and then just start gluing that cork on first. This Gorilla Super Glue is really great, it's not runny, it's quite thick, so it's almost like a gel, and so it dries really fast as well, so I really like using this. And so I've been quite generous getting this cork on and then just holding it in place with my finger just for a few seconds. And then once that's on, it's going to set in about 10 to 20 seconds and be pretty strong pretty quick. Same with the bark, just glue that in place, position it where I had it before so I know that the bulgur is going to stand up nice and flat. And I put quite a lot of glue on here because this is for this big bit of bark. And so really pushing that down in place, letting that glue hold it there and then I'm also going to put a bit more glue just in these little recesses here just to make a really strong connection and I'll just get a little bit more bark a little thin piece trim it up so it fits nicely and then I'll wedge that in push it and then I'll add a bit more glue to the top of that and that's really going to make it nice and secure and then I just start taking little bits of bark and then building it up until I've got a nice rock foundation and bark's really great for making kind of rock when you scale it down like this you get all those nice um, gradients, nice patterns, and you get some really nice textures running through it that will come up nice with some dry brushing later on. And then just in these little gaps, I'm just gluing a couple of tiny pieces in as well, just pushing those in, just to kind of add some variation where, as you look at it. It won't just be two big lumps, there'll be all these little bits as well, and that's just going to break it up and make it look a lot more natural. Put a little bit down there on the base as well, and then there we go. So that's all the big pieces now fit together. So I'm going to take that super glue again. And you could use PVA for this, but I like super glue because it's just going to dry really quick. And so I put loads on, spread it around all over the base. And then I get some of my really coarse flocking and just sprinkle a little bit. And this is going to represent kind of um, hand sized stones. And so I'm just sprinkling a few of those and then I'm going to fill in all the gaps then with that budgie sand. And this budgie sand is really great. You can get it from a pet shop, but it's really super fine. So you get a really nice effect. And there we go. You can see that's all come together now and that sets really fast. I've also glued a little bit on the top there. So I put a little, just a little touch of glue and sprinkled a little bit of sand on that too. And then once that had dried, I put some glue just over the top just to really seal it in place. And then on the other two, I'm keeping them flat because these are going to be regular bulgors, whereas the one that's raised up, I can proxy for a doom bull. And so for these, I'm just going to go really simple with some rocks, some bits of flock, and then I'm going to glue on some skulls. And these are from the skull pack, the Citadel skull pack. So I just cut them off the sprue and then just with a file, just roughly file that down so it's nice and smooth. Then with that super glue again, just put a little dot where you want the skull to go. I've started using tweezers now, this is a lot easier. And you can pick that up, hold it in place, and that's going to set nicely too. I'll put a couple of skulls on this one, and so I'm just positioning another one there. So just wherever you think looks nice, try and face them in different directions. And then I've got a little jaw bone here, so I'm cutting that in half, and I just want to position half of that jaw just on the base there. And this just kind of represents one of the skulls that has a jaw missing. So there we are, there's the skulls, and that's kind of making it more Warhammer now, which we like. And now I've just positioned the Bulgore on top of this just to make sure he is going to sit completely flat. 
and you don't have to do this at this stage you could paint the model before you glue it on but i like to glue it all in place so it's solid and then paint the whole thing in one go so i've used quite a lot of glue and then i'm going to put him in place where i know he's going to be flat and then just get him once he's standing still we can then let go and let that glue do the work and stick him down and we'll get a nice solid fix but you can see there's a little bit of a gap on some parts of the foot because this bark isn't completely flat so we're going to fill that gap in with that super glue then i'm going to take a little bit of that budgie sand and i'm just going to make almost like a little cement there out of the sand and glue and i'm really going to push that into there and fill that gap so we're going to get a solid lump of glue and sand and that's really going to secure that foot because sometimes with super glue it could like snap off especially on bark um you know you could sand it down a little bit as well to get a better grip but doing this filling this gap in makes it really strong and i've done the same on the other side as well and there you can see we've got all three of the bulgors now with the bases all ready to go so i primed them up with the wraithbone citadel color spray and now they're ready to start painting when I did the undercoat, I wasn't too worried about getting an even coat all over the base because we're going to go over it in black later on. So you can see here now, it's all ready to go. And where we put that extra bit of glue and sand, that's really helped tie the piece all together and make it a nice and secure fix. But now we're going to take some Abaddon Black base paint and this is going to go all over this base. And this is why I wasn't too worried about getting that wraith bone really solid all over it. But this is going to give us the base from which we can start building our colours up from and so give that a nice coat all over and then let that dry completely and then we'll start ready to add some different colors to it and we're going to start with the technical paint the martian iron earth and this kind of leaves a crust like you can see here and so i want this color to tie in with the war band for the beast of chaos that i've already built and this you could use bugman's glow which would be pretty close but i wanted to still get a little bit of a crackle paint here um, although I'm not going to put it on thick and I've got all my texture from all the things we've just done previously in the video um, but this is going to match the color just right and it is going to give us a little bit of a crackle and there's two different kinds of these um, technical paints you've got Martian Iron Earth and Martian Iron Crust and the crust is like more of a lumpy clumpy earth whereas the Iron Earth gives you the, the, the crackle so that's what we've gone for and now I'm tidying up with just a little bit of wraith bone and just cleaning those skulls up and also around the feet as well and that jaw bone, give it a nice coat and then let that dry completely before taking some skeleton hoard contrast paint and we'll put a nice amount of this all over those skulls. I put quite a bit in the eye sockets because it does dry quite pale but if you put a lot in these recesses you, you can get a nice little shadow in there and so I'm putting quite a lot in the recesses and then spreading the rest evenly all over the skull. So we'll do that on the two skulls and also on that little jawbone. And I just went round and tidied up again, but you can see it's starting to crackle there. It takes a few hours. I recommend leaving it about five hours if you're putting it on thick, but thin like this, it can just be done really quick. Now we're gonna take some Rakarth flesh and I've got this very vegan makeup brush, which has got super soft bristles, perfect for dry brushing. And I'll take some paint on my brush, work it into the bristles. And I'm trying to get as much paint as I can off my brush and then once I'm happy, I can start dry brushing. And I go gently at first, just so I know how much paint's gonna come off onto the model. And then when I'm confident, I know how much is coming off. Then I just continue all over it, picking out all the different textures and the raised areas, trying to avoid the skulls and hitting all that earth. And then we're gonna knock this back a little bit with some shade next, but just continue all the way around. And then we're gonna take some null oil shade. And this is just gonna give us a little bit more darkness in those recesses it's going to fill in some of the cracks that have formed from the technical paint and just take that highlight down a little bit and then this will really match up to all the ones we did for the war band for the beast of chaos previously so nice even coat all over then it's time to take some base paint that abaddon black again and we're going to paint the rim of the model here and so all the way around give it one more nice coat we did a coat earlier so one more coat here is all we need and there we go, we're all finished. And there's our base for either our Bulgor or our Doombull, all finished. And I've got to say, this was great fun to make, really easy to paint, and this bark comes up really nice as rock. So I can highly recommend using bark, and it's free. And there you can see those skulls come out nice with that awesome contrast paint skeleton hoard. And we're starting to see all the textures coming through from the different sands and flocking we used as well as that bark. And you can see a little bit of crackle just starting on the top of that paint too. 
So really happy with how this finished. But come and watch the next video because I'm going to go away and paint this guy now. Um, but really happy with the base, how we got to. And it's going to tie in with the existing wall band I've got. And also this terrain, which is the home from which they come from. And then if you want to see them in action, you can watch them taking on the legions of Nagash in a previous campaign battle report but there'll be lots more coming now as i start to get all the models painted and you can even go and see how i painted the great bray shaman with a video on how to do that too i'll put links in the description to everything we used in the video so if you wanted to copy this at home then you could do it really easily and i'll put some links to the paints and also to the models if you want to pick those up at element games where you can get a discount with that link and it's an affiliate link but it won't cost you anything extra in fact you can save up to 20 percent and for every sale made through that link i get a small commission which helps me develop the channel and i really appreciate that support so thanks so much for supporting the channel and helping me keep going with these videos if you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel then please check out my patreon page and thanks to everyone who's joined so far it's really awesome we hang out on discord talk about the hobby share ideas and help each other out and you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else so i'll put a link in the description and it'll be great to see you there i hope you enjoyed the video i had a great time making this base and i can't wait to go and paint the model and don't forget to come and join me in that next video to see him painted up and ready for battle and join in in the comment section below as well i love reading your comments and hearing all your thoughts and feedback but thanks so much for watching please like if you like it subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on tabletop skirmish games